Oh yeah, there was that other sprite. The one was tongue out. Oh, the uh, the testimony music is getting eerie. We're getting a third track. I provided sight to my keeper while she spoke with the princess. I'll admit that she did cast invisibility on me during their conversation. She needed to keep me hidden. After all, if he was on her shoulder, wouldn't people see the magical effect or are we just going to attribute that to the invisibility? But I never left the room where my master was. Interesting that he refers to her as his master. Nor did I steal the sword of spell eating. You have nothing on me, Heavensborn. You don't even have proof that I entered William Frege's study. Um, I feel like Eugene's testimony is proof, but we'll see how that goes. Do we have... We don't actually have Eugene's testimony. We have, we have trackers, but not Eugene's. Hmm. You honestly expect us to take your word for it? Or do you have any evidence to support your alibi? I only speak the truth, heavens born. This guy might be a problem because he seems to have no problem talking about our eyes. People are going to start asking, why is this guy referring to us and only us as heavens born? What's going on with that? That's, um, that's going to raise some eyebrows, I feel. There were mages other than my keeper that could have stolen the sword. And by your own admission, None of your witnesses saw me on the night of the murder. Well, Eugene did run into you. The one lacking evidence is you. He has a point. We still need definitive proof that ties him to the murder. Presenting contradicting evidence might not be possible. Exactly, we can't. Are you going to try to eyeball him or are we going to try to to interpret or whatever that icon is? However, he's clearly lying in his testimony, and there's something strange about the way he's speaking. Yeah, he keeps calling you Heavensborn. Why is he pausing so much? Wait. Wait, what? I mean, I noticed that, but why are we drawing attention to it? I thought it was just his way of speaking. Is he taking his cues from, from Beatrice? We're not seeing any thoughts through the eye, but perhaps we can try to interpret the meaning of his words. Okay, we're doing this again. Man, that creepy cross-examination music. You thought the talking monkey was weird. I provided sight to my keeper while she spoke with the princess. Here's a question. I provided sight to my keeper. My keeper. But I never left the room where my master was. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Eris! Eris! I mean, who else? Is there gonna be a shock twist gonna be like, oh yeah, there's a totally different person who's attached to this demon and they're the murderer. He's referring to a master and he's referring to a keeper. He specifically says his keeper cast invisibility and needed to keep him hidden. But I never left the room where my master was. Okay, I'm going to press, but I think this is our interpret target. I think that was a slip of the tongue. I provided sight to my keeper while she spoke with the princess. Maybe something happened. Maybe this is a way we'll get Beatrice where we'll ask her about something that happened during the ball and she's not going to know because Maranoth wasn't there to provide sight. Something like that. Maybe. We'll see. Is this something that you frequently do? Yes. My keeper's accident. Again, keeper. I'm going to keep an eye on when he says keeper and when he says master. My keeper's accident left her completely blind. She looks through my eyes to see her surroundings. 
And did she look through your eyes while she was with the princes? Again, the ellipsis. Yes, she did. He took a bit of a pause before answering our question. Yeah. Is he taking cues from whoever his master is? Where's Eris? Where is she? You get that woman out of here. I'll admit that she did cast invisibility on me during their conversation. She needed to keep me hidden after all. Wait, does that mean she normally casts invisibility every hour? My keeper is a powerful mage, and my pact with her has only made her stronger. Wow, that's actually really impressive. Really? Casting spells may look effortless, but continuously casting spells takes a lot of stamina out of the caster. She must have had a lot of stamina if she can cast a high-level illusion every hour. She has got her spirit status through the fucking roof, I tell you. But I never left the room where my master was. Wait, who's your master? And did your master leave the room while she was with the princes? No. I'm sure you remember. My keeper. Oh, wait, I called her keeper. And we need to keep track of this. Was under the careful watch of the Kingsguard and Lucio Steelwind. My god, my throat needs that hydrate. I'll take that in a second. I'm saying very important things right now, so that coffee will have to wait. And you're maintaining that you never left the ballroom. Pausing again, as I said, I never left the room where my master, wink wink, nudge nudge, was. Who's the master? Like, it's got to be Eris, right? Like, who else would it be? If, if it's someone else, it's someone out of absolute left field. He has a habit of pausing before he responds, but it only happens sometimes. Is it some sta strange demon accent, or is it something else? Who's the master? Nor did I steal the sword of spell eating. I'm going to cast a spell of coffee drinking. Just a second. That coffee's empty. Crap, going to the other one. <clears throat> Beatrice was one of the few mages present that could shatter the glass. Yes, but being able to do something and actually doing it are two different things. Ah, uh, he's right. We won't be able to convict Beatrice unless we can connect Baranoff to the murder. But we have a feeling he's the one that's going to give it to us. You have nothing on me, Heavensborn. You don't even have proof that I entered William Frega's study. This would normally be the thing that I imagine we would press or present or interpret on. But that master line, that bothers me. We're going to press this and then go back to that. Why do you keep calling me that? Oh! Does the Heavensborn not know the nature of his blood? My blood? Could he be referring to our mother? Wait, you know where my abilities come from? Should I be talking about that openly in a courtroom? Yeah, Ruby's like, hang on. Oh, <laughs> how marvelous. You don't know, do you? If you make a pact with me, child, I can tell you the nature of your blood and much much more. Uh, Mr. Cuthbert, please don't make deals with the devil in my court. Please don't make literal deals with the devil in my courtroom. <laughs> uh, I, w I wasn't planning. That wasn't. No, I, w I wasn't going to do that. He clearly knows something, but making a deal with a demon is just asking for trouble. Yeah, no shit. He also could be just trying to distract us. Stay on task. Stay on target. Stay on target. He's definitely more direct than most witnesses. Yeah, but he's still clearly lying. And there's something off about the way he's speaking. He pauses before saying certain statements. We need to interpret the statement that seems the most suspicious. I want to know about the master. If it's not the fifth statement, and it might be, it's going to be this one. I'm going to go with this one first. I want to know about this master bit, because she, he's clearly using two terms. Beatrice is his keeper. Who's his master? Objection! Yep.
He keeps taking pauses before certain statements, but not all of them. And more importantly, his word choice was different at that time. Did he slip up? Marnoth, it looks like you misspoke and used the wrong word. What the fuck did you just say to me? Through most of your testimony, you refer to Beatrice Frega as your keeper. But you referred to her as your master during one statement. Why is that? Oh. Shit. For the first time, he doesn't have a response. So I'll ask you again. Did you leave the ballroom that night? I didn't leave the room where my master was. That's not an answer to the question. That's We're looking for a yes or no here, my guy. Also, who's your master? He's using the word master again, even though we pointed it out. He's under a pact of some kind. I think he's actually being honest, but he's twisting his words to make it sound like he didn't do the thing he did. Why isn't he correcting it? Does that mean he's intentionally using that term? If so, why? Why is Marinoth using the term master? Beatrice is not Marinoth's master. She can be. It's got to be Iris. It's got to be. Okay, if we take his words at face value, the master he's referring to isn't Beatrice. And if Beatrice isn't his master, then his statement, I never left the room where my master was, would technically be true. But to be fair, how does that work? Who's his master? Because if he never left the room where his master was, that means his master went with him. Hmm. But why even bother making that distinction? He clearly has no moral hang-ups about committing murder. He could have just lied. Why wouldn't Marna simply lie? Probably because he can't. Demons apparently pride themselves on tricking and corrupting humans, so why wouldn't he just lie in his testimony? Demons are able, are not able. Demons are not able to lie? That would be interesting. I'm going to throw that at the wall, see if it sticks. No, it can't be. Demons are clearly different from humans, but would they seriously have a limitation like that? It would explain why Tamora and Beatrice were so opposed to having him testify. Yeah, the accomplice that is not capable of lying. Yeah, let's put him on the stand. That's a great idea. There's only one way to know for sure. Ask him point blank. Witness, can you repeat the following statement for me? Tyrion Cuthbert's hair is green. Well, <laughs> damn it. What? kind of ridiculous request is that? What the hell are you on about? Another pause. I'm afraid I must agree, Mr. Cuthbert. Why is he pausing? Who is he talking to? It's gotta be Eris. It's gotta be. Who else would it be? Unless they're gonna pull another character out of their ass. Or it is gonna be, surprise, it's Lucio Steelwind or something ridiculous. I'm just conducting a little experiment, Your Honor. I mean, we're headed for a big reveal. The question is, what is it? So I'll ask you again, Maranoth. Say that Tyrion Cuthbert's hair is green. Your Honor, Cuthbert is clearly making trivial requests to stall for time. His request is not worth a response from the witness. That's not what I'm doing, Tamora, and I think you know that. Maranoth, we truly don't know much about demons aside from the stories told in myths. So is it possible that demons are physically unable to lie? Hey, there's a new sprite. Yeah, we, we shocked the demon. That's something we can put in our diary for today. Damn it. I'm sorry, Mr. Cuthbert, but that seems quite ridiculous. Well, just let him call my hair green. Let's see. Why wouldn't the witness be capable of lying? I genuinely don't know, Your Honor, but his testimony speaks for itself. He can easily refute it by granting my request. Say Tyrion Cuthbert's hair is green, witness. Fuck. You said it yourself. Tyrion Cuthbert's hair is green. That's not what I asked for, witness. Repeat the statement I told you word for word. Nothing after or before it. Objection. Your Honor, the prosecution's argument is absurd. The witness is not obligated to justify such an outrageous request. I might be compelled to agree with you, Miss Tamora. 
if the witness wasn't clearly avoiding fulfilling that request. Well, we're all waiting, Moronoff. Yeah, tell me my hair is green. You can easily prove me wrong by repeating my statement plainly. Ah! You filthy heavens born! Say it, Moronoff. Tyrion! Cuthbert's... Tyrion Cuthbert's hair is... Tyrion Cuthbert's hair is... Blonde! <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> well, technically it's a dirty blonde. Oh, shut the fuck! I hate you! I hate you! <laughs> is Cuthbert correct, Marnoth? Are you actually unable to lie? I think his silence speaks for itself, Your Honor. Remarkable! I would never have imagined. And with that, proving my case becomes a much simpler matter. <laughs> well, crap! <laughs> this is, yeah. Boy, you, uh, you picked a bad accomplice. Marnoth, did you murder William Frega? Yes or no? I, 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 w I am regretting my life choices right now. I would like to leave. I, I would like to have a spa day. I'm sure you understand, Witness. Under these circumstances, saying silent is basically an admission of guilt. You have no reason to stay quiet, Marinoff. Well, shit's about to go down. Tell him the truth. Lady Beatrice, wh what are you? I believe it's time to come clean, don't you, Marinoff? Uh... You know what? You're, you're my keeper, not my master. I think I'll listen to the other person. I see. So that's your play. Wait, wait, there's a play? There's a play? I don't want there to be a play. I don't have tickets to this play. Don't think you can just stall for time, Miss Frega. Marnoth has no choice but to answer the question. Do it, Marnoth. Tell the court the truth. To answer your question, yes. I did murder William Frega. What? What are you doing? Who's the master? Who's the master? Who's the master? Miss Frega, does this mean you are confessing to the murder? Oh, Your Honor, I am not admitting to anything. This confession comes from Marinoth himself. But your own familiar just... Let me ask you a question, Marinoth. Did I order you to murder my father? No. You did not, Lady Beatrice. This is where the, the master is going to play in, right? What? What are you talking about? You're lying. No, you can't say that. He's not lying. He can't. Oh, there we go. The mask is starting to come off. <clears throat> Demons are physically unable to lie, Mr. Cuthbert. Damn it. She's right. She must have done something. Did she plan for this? She must have arranged things so that statement would be technically true. <laughs> D does she have a dog named William Frega? I don't know. She could have asked someone else to give the order, or she could have just implied it. Either way, she could just plead ignorance and blame everything on Marinoff. Still, this isn't over. Oh, is that so? Ask about the master, ask about the master. Let me tell you, this trial was over the moment Arya turned her blade against me. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. I don't care who you are, man, king, or demon. You're not getting away with this. Oh, I do love the gravitas behind that. But I wonder how long it will last. Hit me with your best shot, heavens born. Oh, we're doing this. Oh, we're having an argument. Okay, we're not doing empowered eye. Beatrice Frega, you may have technically ordered your father's murder, or may not have technically ordered your father's murder, but you were clearly acting with malice. You brought something dangerous into the manor, something that you knew would harm your father. Oh, really? And what would that be? I didn't bring anything dangerous into Frega Manor. What about your fucking demon? What was so dangerous that implied lethal, con lethal intent? Uh, that's actually a fantastic question. I don't think you brought this. It was owned by the victim. This is all collected by uh, our dog boy, Tracker. What? What was...
Who are you? What do you want? He must have been shouting that at uh, Maranoth. Uh, I don't actually have an answer for this. <laughs> do, do you mean Tamora? <laughs> you brought Tamora into the into the into Frega Manor? I didn't bring anything dangerous into Frega Manor. I'm actually a little bit stumped on this one. Harrelson security. That. What about the sort of spell? Oh! What if this? I think we may fail this one. I'm a little worried about this, but this is curious. This is curious. Because it says it was forged through a blood contract between a mage and a demon. Probably not this mage and this demon, or at least not this mage. But uh, you were the one who shattered the glass, I assume. I don't know what else I could possibly point to. It's not the rats, it's not the letter opener. It's not Celeste's sword. You didn't technically bring this into the manor, though. I didn't bring anything dangerous into Frega Manor. Yeah, but you did bust this out. <clears throat> and we can, uh, we can ask Maranoth whether he cast the spell that broke the glass or not. I'm gonna throw this out there, but I have a feeling I'm about to lose health. Nope, that's not right. She clearly entered the manor assuming that she might have to murder her father, and she brought something into the manor to make sure she could do that. Letter opener? No? Oh, I'm, I'm fucked. Oh, was that this? Yeah, okay, yeah, you're, you're a demon. You brought Maranoth into friggin' manor that night, exactly. The frickin' demon. You were clearly planning to murder your father from the start. To be fair, she just has that thing on her shoulder at all times. Celeste sword. No, we can't. We we didn't. We brought Celeste sword. Celeste specifically brought Celeste sword. Frega didn't bring that. Ha! I require Maranoth to see. That does not imply lethal intent. But you brought a demon into that house, and the result, your father was killed. That hardly an innocent mistake. My client specifically asked her father if familiars were allowed. We even received a written legal confirmation beforehand. But he couldn't have possibly expected her to bring in a demon. He didn't specify not to do this. The presence of Maranoth did not break any of his rules, nor any laws made by the kingdom. But you have to lose health somehow, come on. Right you are, Tamora. I can hardly be blamed if my familiar acts without my knowledge. How can you be blameless in Maranoth's actions? He's your familiar. By that same logic, shouldn't we also blame Lloyd Haroldson for the actions of his pet monkey? If I recall, he broke into the study, tampered with the crime scene, and then left my father's body without reporting it. That's... Maranoth and Eugene are, intention are intelligent and sentient creatures. They have their own auto autonomy. Their keepers aren't legally responsible for their actions. No, 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 we need to revisit the master line. I want to know who the master is. Damn it! She's playing devil's advocate. Well, she has a literal devil there, so why not? <laughs> That's fitting for her. But you still cast invisibility to keep Maranoth hidden that night. Mr. Cuthbert, I always cast invisibility on Maranoth. I can't very well let people see him. She has lost no health despite our, our picking the right option. Face it, Mr. Cuthbert, you have nothing on me. I did not commit any crimes during the Lord's Ball. Okay, now we talk about the smash. Every crime related to the murder was committed by Maranoth. I did not commit any crimes during the Lord's Ball. How about stealing this? There we go. Beatrice, Marnoth required your magic to break the wards guarding the Sword of Spell Eating. You may be able to explain why you cast Invisibility that night, but you can't explain why you cast an Evocation spell powerful enough to shatter that display case. Oh, that. Huh, I'd almost forgotten. I plead guilty. But what? what? <laughs> She's not gonna lose any health. She's just gonna be like, fuck it, whatever, bitch. I do what I want. To the charge of grand theft, I mean. I ordered Maranoth to help me steal that artifact so I could sell it on the black market. I would have never imagined that he'd use it to murder my father. Technically, he didn't. Right. It doesn't matter if she's found guilty of stealing the sword. The Slayer rule only takes effect if she's found responsible for her father's death. Damn it! Is there seriously nothing she can do? Man, she has got some Goichi levels of defense here. Maranoth will take the fall on Beatrice's behalf. 
Marnoth, it's not too late. You can still do the right thing and tell the truth. That still doesn't absolve you of bringing a demon to the Lord's Ball. Who cares? Marnoth, a sentence for first degree murder is death. Ah, I don't really know how I appeal to a demon here. I don't think... We, we built a psychological profile for uh, Beatrice, but Marnoth is just like, Hey, what's up? I do what I want to. Fuck you. Um, are we actually going to kill a D? I'm not sure we should be threatening that guy. Uh, do we want to appeal? I don't think we can appeal. We're not the master. We're not the keeper. Do I want to threaten a demon? I'm not sure this is a smart move, but I feel like it's more effective than the other ones. Deflect seems like a stupid one. Man, I'm going to try this, but my health bar is not looking good. Oh, that's, that's a good sound. Marnoth, the sentence for first-degree murder is death. Are you really willing to die for your keeper's crimes? Oh, you stupid heavens born. Demons never truly die. When our bodies are destroyed, we return to the abyssal hells. Hell? If I were to die in accordance with your laws, I would only return to my plane unharmed. Oh, well, that sucks balls. Even if I could die, a fate much worse, worse than death awaits me if I fail. So he has to maintain his contracts or else he suffers greatly. But if he gets if he gets killed by us, it's like, whatever, I just go home. Uh, those three are a pain to argue against when they're together. Those three? Who's those three? You mean Tamora? We can't break Beatrice's confidence at all. Yeah, her health bar is just immovable. She's parrying everything. So, do you have anything else, Mr. Cuthbert? Wow, that... I, I thought we were going to lose, and we, we, we progressed, but we are, uh, we are getting nothing done here. We need to ask who the master is. That's the question that needs to be answered. Um, I... I didn't think so. Your Honor, it appears we found the true culprit. I can't believe you killed my father, Maranath. Oh, I'm so cross with you right now. Totally sincere, by the way. Ah, I should give my apologies. I, <laughs> I won't kill your father ever again. I, I promise. Cross my heart. Oh, don't worry. I forgive you. I, really? Fuck this noise. Now then, is there any reason why this trial hasn't ended already, Your Honor? <laughs> what the hell's going on in this room? Come on! Don't you have anything else? There is one thing. What reaction was that? Why are you doing that all of a sudden? What just happened? Off camera. Damn it! Not again, empowered eye. Oh! Is that all you can do now? Glare at me? Oh, I'd be more worried. Uh, is this going to do a thing? Because they, they know what this is. They just call me a heavensborn. Or maybe they're aware, maybe they're not aware of the empowered eye specifically? Nope, Marinoth might know what's going on. Yep, they actually might feel and detect or something that. M Marinoth! What did you just do? Did he shield her? I've been watching him. He's been using an old celestial trick. But it's weak! Your divine gaze won't work here, heaven's born. What? You... Huh, it looks like that was your last piece, Cuthbert. Oh, this can't be how it ends. Not after we've come this far. What is it that you like to say in these situations? Checkmate, Cuthbert. Oh, snap. She got us. She got us with the line. Is that how this ends? Well, I have to say this was one of the more eventful trials I'm overseeing. I, I'm not kidding about that drink, by the way. I am so hitting the bar after this. It was many things, if not enlightening, but I suppose it all ended the same. <laughs> uh, come on, think of something, anything. While I find the defendant's actions quite suspect, I must agree with their argument. None of Miss Frigga's actions that night are illegal under Women Guard law, except for the part where she committed grand theft larceny, but we'll ignore that. 
and there's no proof that the defendant is responsible for her familiar's actions. With these revelations, I see no room for debate. We're gonna have to ask something. Something's gonna come up. Who's the master? We will be taking a brief recess. I will announce my verdict once we resume. Oh, what's gonna happen? Is this seriously how it's gonna end after everything we've gone through to get here? Come on, man, we've been streaming for six hours. Pull something out of your ass. Objection, objection. Steel wind, where's Aria? Where's Aria? Oh, we're gonna remember our mother. I expected Aria to come in clutch with something. She's just gonna be there. I guess we'll check up on her maybe next case. This world is bleak, merciless, and unforgiving. But I've seen you. I know how bright the light within you is. Are we about to activate something else? We're about to go Super Saiyan eyeballs and blow Marnoth away? Use my eyes. Peer beyond the divine gate as I once did. Marnoth called us a heaven's born. And our mother told us that there's a light within us. <laughs> we have no idea what that means. What even is the divine gate? Why do we have the eye of Horus? Why are we able to read people's minds? Here it comes. We're going to level up. We've been so lost lately. We think we finally figured out who we're supposed to be. But all of this, everything we've been working towards, it was all a lie. We spent our whole life trying to be like Miss Tamora. But is she even like her? No, she just ra wanted to raise us into a tool for the eye taker. She was never our guardian. She was never our mother. Our real mother died years ago. Was Eris right? No, don't appeal to Eris. No, 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 Eris is not right. Don't listen to a word Eris says. Is everyone in your life just trying to use us? Looking back on it, we've had no idea what to do with ourselves since our mother died. We've just been making mistake after mistake. Leaving Aranax, trusting Tamora, becoming an attorney. We've always just done as we're told. We've never once made a path for ourselves. A prosecutor's path, as it were. But you saved Celeste, and Wallace, and Dracogen, all when no one else would stand up for them. Was helping them a mistake? You fought for a dream that doesn't exist, but that doesn't mean that you can't make it real. It's true that you followed Tamora's lead, but you've always done what you thought was right above all else. Yeah, we kind of told Tamora to take a hike earlier today. And a couple, a couple of times, actually. You wouldn't have stood up to that criminal if you truly didn't know right from wrong. And you wouldn't be standing here if you'd have just done as you were told. I... What do I do? I'm not going to tell you that. You already know the answer. You've always known the answer. I take a deep breath and relax my thoughts. How do we prove that Beatrice ordered Maranoth? Situations can seem hopeless sometimes, but there's always a way to win in the end. Wait, what's the option here? How do I prove that Beatrice ordered Maranoth? My screen is blank. What the F? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Tell a... Use deduction, use testimony. Oh, I have to pick something. What do I have? Tell a lie. The connects. Beatrice and Maranoth? What are your options? Very strange. Use deduction that separates, that acquits, that kills. Tell a lie that acquits Beatrice and Marnoth? Well, all right, first and foremost, what are our options? Nothing is in here, really. Oh, this guy's here now. Demonic familiar, arcane art, none. He doesn't need him. Uh, who the hell knows? Wait a minute, the dog knows how to use conjuration? No one told me that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, okay, spells. This is the relevant spell du jour. The caster forms a magical unbreakable bond with the target creature. Bond exists. Tell them to turn. Why was... Okay, here's a question. Why was this necessary? Hmm. 
Why couldn't... Why couldn't Marinoth just break into the dude's office and cut his throat and, and leave again? Also, where was Marinoth while the lockdown was happening? Because once he dropped the sword, he couldn't stay invisible. What about this? What about this? Um... Yawn tried to track one of them down and followed it to the storage room. We haven't really touched on Yawn's testimony yet. Yawn was trapped in a storage room near William Frigga's study, took a nap, and was awoken to the sound of some kind of physical struggle. He heard Frigga shout, Who are you? What do you want? After a few more seconds, he heard the sound of someone being stabbed. This doesn't really disprove what's been said, but it is curious. Like, we, this has not come into play yet. Yon tried to track it down and follow it into the storage room. Magically locked the only door leading in, prevented teleportation in and out. Possible to nullify these words with a sort of spell eating. Autopsy. Body shows several scratch marks on the face and back. Traces of illusion magic were also found on the body. We can't argue that Beatrice made him invisible for the purposes of this because she makes him invisible all the time for the purposes of just using him as eyeballs. <clears throat> Traces of illusion magic were also found on the body. What about the fact that she had uh, steel wind attacked? When do we bring that up? Who ordered that? I'm pretty sure Marinoth didn't order that to happen. What about this? Handle was completely shattered. I guess we can assume that the uh, gargoyle there is very strong physically, but that doesn't uh, help us make our case. Blind, autopsy. Doesn't matter. Took a nap, but was awoken. So he tried to track one of them down and followed to the sword. What about Tracker? Hang on. On the night of the murder, Tracker smelled something strange. And followed the scent to the hallway north of Beatrice's bedroom. Then he saw a flying rat. Hmm. What about the fact that the flying rat never bothered to get the sword of spell eating back? If her argument is like, oh yeah, I wanted to st the, steal the sword of spell eating to sell it on the black market. Boy, her interest in that really dried up fast once her father was dead, didn't it? That could be our ticket. <sighs> the will, Harrelson security. Armbands of intelligence, those have been accounted for now. What about the fact that she was establishing an alibi for herself? Why would she go out of her way to establish an alibi? I guess she'll just argue that she was simply chatting with old friends. But she clearly went out of her way to have eyeballs on her, of course. After his meeting with Beatrice Frega, William Frega retreated to his study and locked himself. He refused to speak with anyone who tried to disturb him. He told him about the theft. Hmm. How would this have flowed? Did she intentionally upset him to make him lock himself in his study? Like, she did do this. She did anger him to the point where he was. she was doing this. But that's not really hard evidence, I don't think. Okay. I don't think we have physical evidence. I don't think we have physical evidence. I would love to tell a lie, but what the hell is that going to be? I don't think we get penalized for this, but I would like to at least try to logic it out before I start spamming things. Use deduction that connects. I don't think I connect anyone else to Marinoth. 
Eugene Marnoff Ruby. Hmm. I don't think it's testimony. This is a tough one. We got to remember everything that's happened over the course of this case, and there has been some some banger shit going on. <clears throat> I feel like tell a lie. My instincts say tell a lie is part of it because we know that. Uh, I mean, if Marnoth can't corroborate it, you know, he he has to say our hair is blonde. Tell a lie. that acquits Beatrice and Marnoff? That's curious. What's that lie going to be? We don't get damaged. We don't get hurt. I don't think I've had to save scum once during this game, so we got to kind of figure this out. It's a matter of pride now. I don't want to get a game over. I don't even know what a game over looks like, but... We're not getting it. We're figuring this out. Let's 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 give this a bash. Let's try this. Nope, no matter what you do, it won't mean anything unless we can prove one fact. We need to prove that Beatrice ordered Marnoth to kill her father. We need something strong to prove that testimony won't be enough. Well, I didn't suggest testimony. Use deduction that connects Beatrice and Marnoth. Nope. Well, I didn't say testimony. Physical evidence? Okay, that's the answer. I don't know what the answer to the answer is, but that's the answer. In order to convict Beatrice, I need to prove that she was responsible for Mar Maranoff's actions. People leave trails. Even when they think they've committed the perfect crime, something always gets left behind. There has to be something that proves Beatrice gave Maranoff the order. Beatrice's relationship with Marnoth is clearly different than a relationship between two humans. What is unique about Beatrice's relationship with Marnoth? There's a specific way their relationship works. Their connection is facilitated through a pact. What is that pact? That would be interesting. Yep. There's a specific way their relationship works, or their pact as Maranoth called it. Wasn't there something that someone said, but what was it? Probably Harold. I'm guessing. Oh, right. The sword of spell eating is said to have been forged using a pact between a demon and a mage. Was something else forged? Isn't making a pact with a demon just asking for trouble? They're definitely going to betray you the first chance they get. Well, legends say the demon often drafted blood contracts for this reason. Wait, do you mean like a legally binding contract? The concept is similar, but once you sign a blood contract, both you and the demon are magically compelled to fulfill its terms. That's right, Be Beatrice must have made a blood contract with him. A legally binding document like that must describe how their relationship works. I'm not sure there's an actual physical document. Leaf did or Laf did tell us that Beatrice would never trust someone that she couldn't control. Oh, that is true. I didn't twig to that. So she would only put herself in a situation where she had full control over Marinos' actions. But it's not as if they'll ever show it to me. It would be a tall order to even prove that blood contracts even exist. Hmm. We're just talking with our mother at this point, I guess. I guess you have a point. But if you ask me. I think you've done a wonderful job so far. So just this once, let me guide you the rest of the way. Frey is just here now, I guess. What? Tyrion, your eyes don't actually read minds. They give you the means to reveal truths that are being concealed. You can pull the truth out of anyone and anything. The truth? So, say it together with me. Oh, do we have an incantation? Maranoth, Dweller of Avernus. Oh, oh, we used our full name. It's like when your mother, when, it's like when his demon mother gets some, catches him coming in late after supper. Wait, wait, what are you doing? Oh, are we actually going to make a pact and make him reveal shit or what? By the eye of Horus, I issue upon you a divine edict. 
Release thine guards and manifest your blood contract with Beatrice Frega. Shit whistles. Oh, here we go. It's 50 pages long. I'm not reading that shit. What are you, crazy? It's a legal document written in blood. It's also 50 pages long. Luckily, we somehow know the excerpts of the exact session we need. Yeah, I just, just, you know, happen to know. Marnoth is prohibited from killing or injuring any and all humans. Beatrice Frega can designate individuals that are exempt from this rule, and exempted individuals will only remain so for 24 hours. After that, Marnoth cannot harm them unless told otherwise. Well, screw you. That's your ass handed to you right there. Uh, please don't sick him on me. Please don't make me exempt, thank you. We did it, but how? Was that really our... So there's just a 50-page document sitting on my desk now, and Marnoth is just like, Oh, crap! That's not important right now. She gave us what we needed. The rest is up to us. What in the nine hells was that? <laughs> you! When? When did you learn to... Mr. Cuthbert, what just happened? Your Honor, I just made the witness manifest their blood contract. You did what? Uh, bl blood contract? What? Uh, this... We didn't cover this in, uh, in the law school I went to. I'm, I'm gonna need this explained to me. You can think of it as a legally binding document. It lays out the terms of the pact between Beatrice Frega and her familiar. <laughs> Ruby's just like, what the hell is going on? Incredible. Where did you learn to do such a thing? Um, the, the library. <laughs> uh, I, I read it somewhere. Wow. To think that our kingdom had access to such knowledge. Yeah, moving on. Yeah, I, I'm not buying that. We'll, we'll talk later, Celeste. How did you really find out how to do that? It's a long story. We're not sure if she'll believe us even if we told her. Anyways, the defense's argument is such. Marnoth was acting alone, and the defendant is not to blame for his actions that night. However, taking a look at page 7 of this blood contract... Oh, it's not buried on page 38? It specifies that Marnoth is prohibited from killing any and all humans. There's only one scenario where he can do so, and that's when Beatrice Frega designates, designates someone to be exempt from this rule. You! Beatrice Frega, you didn't directly order Maranoth to kill your father, but you implied it by telling Maranoth that he could kill him. Not only that, you did so within the 24 hours of the Lord's Ball. Your intent was clear. You bought Maranoth into Frega Manor with full knowledge that he could and would kill William Frega. Where's the breakdown? Give it to me. And that is checkmate, Ruby. This is checkmate, okay? When you said it, no, that was just check. Now it's checkmate. Kiss my ass. So what's the consequences of this going to be? Eris is going to come down on us like a rain of holy fire, I, I swear. And just when I thought the surprises were over, now nah, they're not over yet. Next chapter is the final chapter. Get ready for a circus. But in the end, we arrived at the truth. I suppose I can't disagree with that. What do you have to say for yourself, Lady Frega? Do not call me that. It's almost funny that you hate your name that much. Your entire plan depended on your claim to the Frega estate. Do you have any idea what you've just cost me? Everything! has been ruined because of you! Why should I care? You're just another noble, trying to steal power for yourself. Don't you dare lump me in with those tyrants. We wouldn't have just liberated House Frega. We would have liberated everyone. Miriam, Loth, Arya, even Oster. Our system is broken. The only way we can fix it is by burning it down from the inside. As long as King Olivier sits on the throne, this suffering will only continue. L Lady Frega! As the prosecutor, I should warn you, you don't want to add treason to your list of crimes. Even though we'd really like to see the king ousted as much as she does, but we'll keep our mouths shut. Hmm, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm done either way. Well, this has been weird. You, you guys are entertaining. Uh, heaven's born. Look at page 46 of the blood contract. By accepting this pact, Beatrice Frega forever binds her soul to the Abyssal Hells. Well, yeah, you're extra screwed. If Beatrice Frega fails to pay her debt by claiming House Frega and all of its assets, 
Oh, well, we just did a, uh, a bad, didn't we? Her soul, her mind, and her life will be claimed by the Empress of Discord. That sounds bad. The contract goes on to name several parts of House Fregus Holdings. There's very little room for ambiguity. Arya was almost right. She just jumped to the wrong conclusion. My debts were never to the Eye Taker. It was to the Abyssal Hells. Why would you agree to something like this? Because I miscalculated. In this folder are records of your many plots against House Steelwind and the Crown. It would be a shame if this information fell into their hands. You think this feeble attempt at blackmail will frighten me? I've dealt with far more formidable adversaries than you. There's nothing I can't solve with House Frega's resources. What are you talking about? Lucio Steelwind isn't the type of person you can just buy. It's clear your time away has taught you nothing. Everyone can be bought. Before I left, he controlled every aspect of my life. I saw him as this unstoppable, tyrannical force, but I never even considered one possibility, that William Frega was a sheltered moron. He honestly thought he could pay off Lucio Steelwind. Anyone who's met him would know that would never work. I could have sent this information to House Steelwind and the King, but I was running out of time. I needed to inherit House Frega as soon as I could. I felt trapped. I felt angry. I just wanted something to change. Something about this feels wrong. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's a bad out, but she set herself up for it, buddy. I mean, she killed a dude. Something deep inside us is crying out in anger. A blood contract is still a legal contract, isn't it? What? If it's a contract, we can dispute it. We can find some kind of loophole to get you out of it. No, no, that's not gonna work. What? Trying to redeem the enemy you just defeated? The fuck is... Are humans all this stupid? I'm sorry I came here. You really are a heaven's born. Jeez. I'm sorry, Mr. Cuthbert, but I won't accept your help. What? Why? We can at least try, right? Did you seriously come this far just so you could die? To dispute a blood contract is to bet your own soul. If you fail to render it null, your soul will be dragged to hell alongside hers. Okay, uh, having second thoughts, backing out, changed my mind. Even your divine blood won't save you from that fate. But still, I can't just... You've beaten me, Mr. Cuthbert. I don't want to drag anyone else down with me anymore. Not you, not Loth, not Miriam. Despite everything, I still have my dignity. I believe there's no further need to prolong this trial. Bailiff, please escort Lady Frega and her familiar to a holding cell. Well, what's the epilogue of this gonna be? I'll be passing my verdict shortly. Well, there's that nice Adis Attorney music. Man, glad that's over. Ha <laughs> ha. The world, this world needs a, a cuttlefish hypnotist here. Do you want, uh, no, I would have checked out ages ago. This is way beyond my pay grade. I would have, I would have left long before the little fucking demon showed up. I'm like, no, nah. no, not my area of expertise. I, I'm a cuttlefish hypnotist, so I don't have to put up with this crap. Hey, are you okay? Yeah, as okay as I can be. We still feel uneasy about how things turned out. It doesn't feel quite like the victory we were hoping for. We fought against the demons, and we can't help but feel like we lost. Cuthbert, yeah, hey Ruby, what's up? <laughs> Boy, this has been a day. Can't imagine how things are going to be after this, huh? We need to talk. Uh, could we do it here? I'm not gonna follow you 20 minutes to a uh, back alley again. That's that's not on my itinerary. What's done is done, but the boss isn't going to take kindly to what you've done today. I know it's a long shot, but maybe if you talk to him, he'll know. Cuthbert, this is serious. He's going to send people after you. Dangerous people. You can't just ignore this. How old were you when your real mother was executed? 
10 years old? Tamora was the adult in that situation, and what did she do? She fed your anger and hatred for the nobility, instead of allowing you to process your grief healthily. Tamora took you away from your only friends and isolated you from society. As a result, you never formed any other relationships. She isolated you because she wanted to use you. Spooky Sprite. Please just listen to me and shut up. Tyrion? How could you do this? How could you work with criminals? Cuthbert, I... Everything you told me. All those ideals about protecting the weak. It was all a lie. Everything Commander White said about you is true, isn't it? I'm just trying to... I don't want your help. As we yell at her, our voice echoes through the lobby. Several of the people nearby turn silent. I gave up everything for you. My childhood, my home, my happiness. I left it all behind to chase the ideal that you told me was worth fighting for. But it was never real, was it? You made me throw away everything. All for a goddamn lie. But I'll make it real. And I'll do it without you. Tyrion, I... As she reaches her hand out to us, we step away from her. You never cared about me, did you? All you cared about was using the Eye of Horus. That's not... Shut up! I don't want to hear it anymore. For your damn lies. Go away, get the hell away from me. I'm not sure Ruby entirely deserves this. Eris is definitely being manipulative. But uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll make up in Chapter 5, assuming Ruby doesn't end up being the victim, which is on the table. I never want to see you again. Be careful. Be careful. I just said she might die. That might be the last thing you say to her, and next thing you know, she's in a, in a puddle, surrounded, <laughs> surrounded by a uh, Reperio Arcanum. Without a word, she walks away from us. <laughs> Tyrion, let, let's, not let's not snap at Celeste, okay? She reaches out our hand to hold ours again, but she hesitates this time. Do you honestly think Celeste will ever love you? See, this is Eris manipulating us now, not Ruby. I'm sure you understand now. Tomorrow I can only afford to pay her exorbitant salary because of my father. You've already burned that bridge. So where do you think the Crimson Demon will go when you can't afford her services anymore? Do you think she has the luxury of playing around with you for free? Or do you actually think that she enjoys spending time with you? Tyrion, you have to look at this rationally. Any support or affection that she's given you has only been to keep you as an employer. No. Oh, good. We spoke up. Uh, what? Wait, you didn't say this last time. Wait, you're not allowed to edit the game. Only I get to do that. I can't believe it. We actually won. So this is a flashback to the first case, I'm sure. Tyrion, hi. Celeste, there's no way to you, for you to avoid checkmate next turn. Just surrender. There. What about that? Checkmate. Damn it. <laughs> You've been acting weird since we arrived in Oranax. Does it have something to do with your mother? Please, just talk to me. I'm I'm your friend, aren't I? Yeah, come on. Let's not abandon Celeste here. She's a good she's a good egg. I her hand, my hands are trembling. Why are we so scared right now? Hey, Celeste stood with us against said employer. That's gotta count for something. We feel Celeste hold her trembling hand from behind us. It's the same sensation we felt back then. Our anxiety fades and we take a deep breath. This was just earlier in this stream. I'm not going to do that, Miss Tamora. As she hesitates to hold our hand, we reach out and grasp it. There we go. She smiles as we take hold of it. She seems glad we didn't pull away this time. Without thinking, we pull her into a hug. Well, that escalated quickly. Huh? Wait! <laughs> well, she likes it, so it's, it's fine. Sorry, I just really need this right now. Should I stop? Uh, no, it, it's just... People are staring at us. Who cares what they think? They're nobles. <laughs> they, that, that's a Celeste line from last stream. They're going to hate us no matter what we do. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I guess I, I did say that, didn't I? Give us a give, give us a hug, CG. We're still unsure of what we're going to do next. But perhaps we don't need to. Even if Tamora's ideal was a lie. Hey, Celeste. There's been something I've been wanting to tell you about. Yeah, we're going to share our uh, eyeball powers. Uh, oh, um, what is it? It's hard to explain, really. I don't even know where to begin. But it's about an ability I have. I call it the Eye of Horus. <laughs> and this time we're not being a Chuni. Even if that ideal was a lie, we have the power to make it real. 
I have a feeling uh, case five is uh, gonna be wild. We're gonna we're gonna find out what that's like next Sunday. And even if we can't trust Tamora anymore, we have people in your life that we can trust. Well, singular. Episode N. Completed case four, severed ties. Except not really, because there's an epilogue, and I have a feeling this is going to be wild, too. Eris? Eris? All right. Well, what a fine mess this is. That kid has completely and utterly ruined everything. We need to stab him so much. It is six hours. Six and a half. It'll be six hours after I edit it down for YouTube. As much as Tamora hates it, we're going to need to put him in the ground. Yeah, no kidding. These guys, uh, we are on everybody's shit list. I don't think that'll be necessary. Yeah, Eris doesn't necessarily want to do that because she has an interest above and beyond everyone else's in us. So maybe we're safer than we think, but maybe not really because we don't know what Eris's, uh plans are. I don't think that'll be necessary. Sorry, love. I know you're fond of him, but I can't let an insult like this go unanswered. No, 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 you don't understand. I'm in charge. He's gonna have to pay the price. I think you've misunderstood me, father. I mean that this facade is no longer necessary. Uh-oh. Speaking of masks getting dropped. That was a transformation sound. Jump scare incoming. And he saw it. And, uh, he's not impressed. He's about to get eaten by a bracken. What the hell? Are we gonna see it, or are we gonna are we gonna be getting teased? Is something wrong, father? Who? Who the hell are you? Okay, so she's been just making him think that he's the father. I wondered about that because Eris specifically implied that she wasn't human, which made me wonder about this guy. But now she's dropped the illusion, and he's like, "Wait, what the hell's going on here? I don't have a daughter. You look nothing like my daughter. So why?" It happened centuries ago, I believe. Your great ancestor hated the monarchy and needed a weapon to fight the mages of the noble house. Okay, we need to pay attention to this. It happened centuries ago. Your great ancestor hated the monarchy and needed a weapon to fight the mages of the noble house. So he made a pact with me. Uh-oh, I knew she was a demon. What? What are you talking about? But things didn't turn out like he wanted, I'm afraid. Poor Lord Laeron's plot. Laeron, that's a new name. Poor Lord Laeron's plot was discovered, and his noble house was stripped of its rank and status. His very name was stricken from the annals of history. There's the jump scare face. He was supposed to give me Wyvern Guard, but I had to settle for claiming his bloodline. Laeron? Oh, that's his name. How do you know about my name? No one knew about that name, not even my real daughter. I know it's been centuries, but I haven't forgotten, John. Everyone in your bloodline belongs to me, including your daughter. Oh, watch it be Celeste. Oh, that would be something. What if Celeste is the, is the daughter? That would be crazy. I mean, the daughter is somewhere. What did you do to her? I guess we'll find out. You bastard! What did you do to her? What I do to all my prey? I made her suffer. No. Did you know that she was crying out for you for months? Okay, it's not Celeste. Well, maybe it is Celeste. I made her watch, you know. I made her watch as I took her place. Okay, never mind. I don't think it is. All while the father that she so desperately called out for <laughs> forgot who she even was. <laughs> while my minions slowly and painfully tore her soul apart. You, you monster, you goddamn monster. I enjoyed her torment while it lasted, but even that couldn't satisfy me. What I really crave is the blood of a celestial. That's what this is about, that stupid kid? But I can't have you kill my te dear Tyrion just yet. At least not until I'm done with him. You goddamn demon, I'll kill you! That, this man is your enemy. Your life's goal is and has always been to exact revenge on him. Okay, what just happened? I feel like she gave a suggestion, like, again, as a hypnotist. 
Like, did she just summon a demon and just say, hey, John over there is your enemy. Your life goal is to exact revenge. Or maybe she just gave him a suggestion where it's like, hey, see this person. That man is your enemy. What, what did she just do? We heard the sucky sound again. Did she just, did she just illusion John again? What just happened? What the hell are you talking about? Oh, there we go. Yeah, she gave the suggestion to this guy. You! I lost everything because of you! No, 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 wait. They kicked me out of the Inquisition because of your false testimony. What the hell are you talking about? Let go of me! Oh! he. She gave the suggestion to everyone. Well, this is a role of reversal. This will go poorly. Hey, remember when I was surrounded by mercenaries that wanted to hurt me? You! You killed my entire family! I won't let you get away with this! What, what are you talking about? I didn't do anything! Hey! Isn't that the noble who killed all those children? I heard he got released by paying off the judge! His name is now John Liren, by the way. It's not the eye taker. What are you all talking about? Get away from me! So she literally just... There's also the stories that we've been hearing about the purple mark and the mind control and the mage blight and the crazy cases that Orium has been investigating. All of it's going to tie back to Eris. So like I said, this fifth case is going to be wild. Don't lie to us. We know what you did. No, no, stay away. Well, you're not getting out of here alive. <laughs> We've finally entered the final act. My dearest Tyrion. And from what I've seen, I think I know exactly how I'm going to break you. Uh-oh. Well... The final uh, victim is going to be Ruby or Celeste. This is uh, this is not going to go well for somebody. Probably Celeste. Because Ruby wouldn't break us. Celeste probably would. I hope you're just as excited as I am. And now we're done. New game. Whoever this guy is. Case 5, Attorney of the Arcane. I hope we find out more about what happened to uh, Arya. But that, that was a ride. That was a wild one. That was six hours. <laughs>